I know the title of this video sounds like clickbait, but I promise you it's not. This is a real six-figure GovTech career framework that actually works if you apply it. Just like Ace did, he ended up going from making $30,000 a year to $55,000 a year in a cybersecurity analyst role, and then his next job paid him $130,000. He was able to do this within 18 months, and he even had job offers for his very first job in GovTech. Making $75,000, he just decided to go cyber instead. And many more people have followed this framework and have gotten to six figures without having any previous tech experience whatsoever. So in this video, I'll be breaking down my complete six-figure GovTech framework that'll help you make six figures in your GovTech career within 18 months. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter if you have a clearance. It doesn't matter if you don't have a clearance. This will work for you. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos. And if you've already started using my six-figure GovTech framework, let me know in the comments below and let me know which step you're on in this video. So if you're brand new to this channel and you have no idea what GovTech is, so GovTech is the government technology industry and it's when you work in the industry as a tech professional supporting either the federal government, the state government, local government, or working as an employee at a government contractor company. So you do not have to work for the government to be working in GovTech. I personally haven't worked for the federal government since I was in college and 19 years old and I don't plan on going back ever. But just because I don't work for the federal government does not mean that I don't work in GovTech. I have been working in GovTech for 16 years now. I started out in this industry at 16 years old just by getting one tech certification. I got the CompTIA A+, and that got me started in my career literally a month later in a help desk role. And now 16 years later, I'm an overseas government contractor specializing as a radar system engineer, and I work all over the world. But this video is not about my background. This video video is about how you can apply this framework and what it is and how it could be life-changing for you. There's a huge opportunity in GovTech right now. A lot of people don't know this, but the government spends over a hundred billion dollars every single year on government technology, and they need people that can get clearances and have technical skills to be able to do the technical work that they need done. And again, you don't have to work for the federal government. You can work for a government contractor company because the government contractor companies like the Boeings, the Lockheed Martins, the Northrop Grumman's. Those are the companies that actually do the technical work for the federal government. And that's where the opportunity is because since the government is spending all of this money, they always need to hire new people. Every single day, they are putting out brand new contracts that are being awarded to government contractor companies. And these companies cannot keep up with the demand of all of these new contracts that are being awarded every single day. They even made an announcement that the Pentagon budget will be a trillion dollars next year. So with a trillion dollar budget and most of it going towards government technology, there's a huge opportunity here. And you don't need to worry about AI or anything like that as well, because as you all know, the government does move slower, but they use AI already in the GovTech sector, but they're not using it to replace people like big tech is. Meta is actually working on an AI to replace mid-level software engineers. This year, probably in 2025, we at Meta as well as the other companies that are basically working on this are going to have an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. That's not happening in GovTech at all. The way that AI is using GovTech is to make processes more efficient, to be able to process more data, not to replace people. And since you're working with the government or for the government, the government needs US citizens that can access classified information. Since the government needs US citizens, you're always gonna need humans around to access this classified info. And if you haven't noticed, the government will never stop spending money. And the government is trying to make sure that we are the number one technological advanced nation out there. If you haven't seen the news yet, almost every single big tech company is now trying to work with the government to help them develop either AI tools or just work with the government in general because they know that they're going to guarantee get money every single year. So this is why you want to work in this industry because you never have to worry about spending. You never have to worry about budgets and funding coming down because the government is going to spend every single year on technology. So these technology 
technology roles in GovTech are considered mission critical because they're needed to keep our nation safe and our nation secure. And if you don't believe me, you literally can go on to clearancejobs.com and you can go and change your category to IT and you'll see there's thousands of IT jobs on clearance jobs right now. Also, a lot of people think that the government isn't hiring right now, but if you go to usajobs.gov and you type in 2210, which is the IT job series, go and sort by the most recent job that's going to close and you'll see there's jobs that are being posted, let's say for example today, and they're closing two or three days later. They're going up so fast and the demand is so high that most people don't even see these jobs and they don't know they're available. All right, so now you should have a clear understanding on the opportunity that's in GovTech and why this could be a good career choice for you to have a long lasting career. So here is the first step in my six figure GovTech career framework. Step number one is getting the Security Plus certification and finding a job that's going to sponsor you for your government security clearance. The Security Plus certification can open up so many doors for you in GovTech and it has nothing to do with cybersecurity whatsoever. Getting the Security Plus does not mean you're going to guarantee get a cybersecurity job, but the government really respects the Security Plus certification because the government has standards that they always have to follow. So as a standard working in GovTech, if you have root access or admin access, you need to have the Security Plus certification. So even if you don't have any tech experience whatsoever, this certification opens up a lot of opportunities for you because you can get hired in an entry level IT role like help desk, IT support, data center technician, any of those type of roles, and you would be able to have root or admin access, which most people work in those roles do not have the ability to get. And of course, with the Security Plus certification, you will learn foundational cybersecurity information, but that's not the point of the Security Plus. If you want to learn more about the different certifications that are respected in GovTech, I have an entire video ranking all of these certifications. So you literally can just go watch that. So if you're like me and you don't have a military background, the best way and the fastest way to get sponsored for a government security clearance is to go on to clearancejobs.com and search ability to obtain. And this will show you all of the jobs that will sponsor you for clearance. Now, when you're first getting started out, you pretty much just want to find a job that's going to sponsor you for a secret clearance. That'll be enough to give you opportunities everywhere. Now, with these jobs that come up, if you want to get sponsored for a clearance, you might have to relocate. But trust me, you're going to want to get a clearance because the clearance itself is worth six figures. Clearance Jobs put out a report this year that said that the average secret clearance holder makes a little over a hundred thousand dollars a year. It was a hundred thousand two hundred ninety six dollars to be exact. Once you get this secret clearance, this will guarantee that you're going to eventually be able to make six figures in your career and it doesn't take too long to do it. Step number two is to get hands on experience, shadow your colleagues and get one to two more certifications. Now, step number two means that you're already working in GovTech. You landed your first job and now you're working in the industry. So what you want to do when you're working in the industry, because you're brand new, you have no tech experience. You want to make sure you're shadowing the people that you work with and learning as much as possible. You want to be a sponge when you're coming into this new job. So you're going to want to stay at this first job for six to eight months. Most people that follow this framework end up getting a help desk job, IT support job, a data center technician job, or an IT analyst job as their very first job in GovTech. I do see a lot of people get the Security Plus and jump straight into cybersecurity analyst roles. They won't be the highest paying cybersecurity analyst roles, but you can jump straight into cybersecurity if you already have that clearance. Now, let's say you're in this first role and it's not paying you six figures yet. You're going to want to stay in this role for six to eight months. From there, you're going to want to job hop. Job hopping is how you can be very aggressive with your career. You want to either job hop into a cybersecurity role or a Linux system administrator role. To job hop into a cybersecurity role, you're going to want to get a few more certifications. You're going to want to get the CYSA plus that's offered by CompTIA. You also are going to want to get the Security X certification that's offered by CompTIA. And you'll want to learn some different cybersecurity tools like Splunk, Tenable Nessus, and ACAS if you're able to get access to it. For Linux system administration, you're going to want to get the Red Hat certified sysadmin certification and the Red Hat certified engineer certification, which are both also known as the RHCSA and the RHCE certifications. While you're working this job, you want to be working on these certifications. And as soon as you get close to six months, start applying to more jobs. 
why most people don't make it to six figures is because they become stagnant, they become complacent, and they think that they have to stay working these jobs for many, many years to get promoted. You don't want to sit around at this job. Be aggressive with your career, and that's what's gonna allow you to move up quickly. Step number three, job hop into a higher paying role that's going to pay you six figures. It's even good if they can upgrade your clearance as well. So if you start with the secret clearance, that next job that you get, they can upgrade you to a top secret, or they can upgrade you to a top secret that requires a polygraph and I don't want to get too deep into these clearances right now because that's a whole nother video that I've also made that breaks down all of the different clearances what they are and what they stand for and what type of jobs you can get with them so once you job hop into this next role that pays you six figures now you want to stay in your roles for 12 to 18 months and then continue to job hop every 12 to 18 months until you get to your goal salary that is literally it that's the three steps to my six-figure GovTech career framework. If you apply those steps, you will be able to get to six figures in GovTech within 18 months. And as a bonus, if you don't have a technical degree yet, I highly suggest that you allow the company to pay for your degree. And I recommend that you go to WGU because those certifications that you already got, at least the CompTIA certifications, will count as classes towards your degree. So WGU allows you to get certifications and your degree at the same time. I really think that some of WGU WGU bachelor's degrees are really good and really affordable. If you made it this far in this video, drop a like and put a comment letting me know if you want me to make a video ranking all of the WGU bachelor degrees. If you haven't grabbed your ticket yet for GovTechCon 2025, now is the time to do it. We have a virtual aspect to the conference where you can attend virtually, you can submit your resume and your resume will be seen by recruiters and the ticket is 50% off for the virtual tickets. Use code YT50 to take 50% off your virtual ticket and grab a $50 ticket today. If you want to learn more about the conference, visit www.govtechcon.com. Links in the description to buy your ticket. And that literally wraps up my six-figure GovTech career framework. That's exactly what you want to do to be able to get to six figures in GovTech within the next 18 months. Now, this will not work for you if you're not willing to be committed, if you're not flexible on location, and if you're not a U.S. citizen. But if you are are willing to do these things, you're willing to study, you're willing to work hard, this will work for you. And it is tried and proven and it's something that I've done myself and many other people that have learned from me have applied and done as well. I also made a completely free 40 minute GovTech course that breaks down step by step how to land your first GovTech job. Make sure you watch it, the link's in the description. I'll see you on the next one.